What's up, guys, and welcome back to the Coasters Unscripted Podcast. I'm your host, Andrew, from Coaster Thrills, joined by my co-host, Caleb, from Backyard Thrills. Caleb, how are you doing today? I'm doing fantastic, Andrew. How about you? I'm doing fantastic. Uh, yes, we may be recording this on a Thursday, but yeah, I mean, it's 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 we've been trying to get these episodes out there. Uh, it's been really tough for both of us to find time, but finally, we're recording this on a Thursday, even though it like was supposed to be out like how long ago, like two three weeks ago. But for this week's episode, which last week's episode, we're just gonna get it out as soon as we can, and we'll film the next episode pretty soon. But um. Yeah, here we are, episode four, and welcome, guys. Welcome to the podcast. Caleb, are you excited? We've got tons of stuff. Oh, yeah, we've got tons of stuff since we haven't really been recording weekly, so we're excited to uh, to share it with you. Yeah, well, we got a whole new segment. Y'all, uh, it is going to be so hype. Today is going to be a fantastic episode. We got a whole new segment that y'all are going to be so surprised about. It is going to be great, and... Maybe just maybe this new segment will go on to the next uh, future episodes. But here we are. We got a new segment. Wow. Of course, all the other segments are turning, and it is going to be a great episode. Uh, but Caleb, like, what parks have you been to recently? I, I, I know, obviously, but what do the viewers need to know? Uh, so recently, we did take a trip out to Fun Spot Orlando, and that was my first time at Fun Spot Orlando. So uh, I have now written written White Lightning which was definitely one that I have been wanting to get on for a very long time now. Um, and yeah, and that was amazing. Other than that, I've been going to multiple trips to our home parks since then, riding Iron Gwazi a lot, uh, going to Bush Gardens mainly a lot. Um, and yeah, Andrew, have you been up to anything? Yeah, um, I mean, I've been to pretty much the same as you, pretty much, but yeah, I've just the home parks going, but something that's different than the home parks is a trip that we just might be going on pretty soon. And obviously you will have the full coverage through uh, all the platforms we have, but should we announce it, Caleb? I think we should. We should. All right. Today, this is the episode where we announce it coming on April. What is it? Like eight through 10 is or 11 is when we're going, but we'll be at Carowinds on the 9th and 10th of April, which that is it's so weird. It's coming soon, but like we're going to be at Carowinds, bro. We're going to get to ride Fury, like 325, Night Rides. Like, dude, like that would be something we didn't experience the last time. Yeah, it closed at like, what was it, like 6 o'clock last time? 7 o'clock on opening yeah, it was like day six in 2021 seven. when we went. But yeah, super excited yeah. to get Fury and Copperhead Strike Night Rides. Uh, we also just learned, we did not know this beforehand, but apparently there's an ACE event on that day at Carowinds, so uh, I just learned about it, so we're super hyped for that. Apparently. Yeah, I, I, there's going to be some backstage tours. I heard it's like going to be one of Copperhead Strike, right? Copperhead Strike ERT is included. Uh, ERT, and I think it's a, back, a backstage tour t- as well, but just... I, I'm so glad to get back on Copperhead Strike. Um, Copperhead Strike makes my top 25. So does Fury 325. And both of those coaches are just so good. Like, especially Copperhead Strike. That thing is, like, so underrated. Like, it has so many good moments to it that you just can't ignore. Like, seriously. But, yeah, we'll be going back to Carowinds, of course. Get to I mean, the last time we went was opening day, of, like Caleb said, in May last a year in 2021. So, it's nice to be back, Um, even though it hasn't been a year. But, It'd be nice to be back, uh, get some more rides on those great coasters. But today we got a great episode for y'all. Uh, but let's just jump in. I mean, our first, our first segment, of course, of all the podcasts, we'll be starting with the news. In our first bit of news, um, one of the things, Doctor Diabolical, as you all know, uh, Doctor Diabolical's cliffhanger is a coaster, a B and M dive coaster, coming to Six Flags Fiesta Texas. And recently, they have done so much construction on this thing. There has, uh, they've just hopped it off, which I mean, like that's just insane. Like the construction is is going along so fast. It's going and, along so fast for what we all expected Six Flags to do. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's especially yeah, of course, for Six Flags. I mean. We're not used to this for Six Flags, like, <clears throat> cough, cough, 
West Coast Racers, but Six Flags come in and clutch for once, uh, getting some good construction on this coaster. And of course, talking about Diabolical's cliffhanger is is going to be a good dive. I feel like, um, especially with the way they are doing it and how Six Flags is kind of getting into more theming with their rides, I feel like this could really have some great potential to it. Yeah, I think so too, Andrew. Um, and I think the drop on that will be different from what we're used to experiencing because of the fact that, you know, we're used to B&M dive coasters like Chikra, Griffin, Balraven, all those coasters having a 90 degree vertical drop. It'll feel actually maybe drastically different to have one with a 95 degree vertical drop. So I think that will I mean, definitely spice things up a bit. It'll definitely feel different than what we're used to on a dive coaster. Yeah, I mean, like, could it be the best dive coaster? Maybe. I don't know. I'm, I'm just super pumped to get back on this thing. Uh, or not get back on this thing. It hasn't opened yet. But um, I, I have some very high hopes for this thing. At uh, first, when I saw the announcement, it wasn't as hype. But still, here we are. Construction is looking great. And overall, this thing uh, is definitely going to be opening pretty soon. Especially uh, since it's already March, which is crazy. But on to our next bit of news. Uh, recently, um... Disney just released um, this new video of Cosmic Rewind. As you all know, Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind is a new coaster coming to Epcot, and they have just released this absolutely great um, teaser of the station. This station looks great. I mean, it's... Oh, it just is a sneak peek of how good this thing will be. I, I think this could possibly be the best Disney coaster. Maybe it could be. Yeah, I mean... Who knows? I mean, I know, Caleb, you love rock and roller coaster, but, I mean, come on. I feel like this could be so much better. Um, It's up for debate. Honestly, nobody's ridden it yet besides, you know, the Disney Imagineers. But I honestly, I don't know about my expectations going into it. I have the expectation that it will be lower than rock and roller coaster, personally. But I have seen a rendered animation from from someone who has been watching the construction and a leaked layout for it. Uh, there is a video on it. Um, I suggest going to watch a DSMY newscast video on the leaked layout for it. It has a little animation in it about what might you see in the layout. Uh, there's a lot of twists, turns. There's no airtime hills really in that, um, which surprised me because Disney likes to use their airtime hills with Space Mountain and Rock and Roller Coaster even has one towards the end. But um, it'll definitely be very story driven, so I think I'm really looking forward to that aspect of the ride. Yeah, it just looks so good. Like I, I feel, like, especially with the Guardians. I mean, I personally love the movies of the Guardians of the Galaxy, and I feel like with that theme, they could really utilize it and make it such a great attraction. But next, better news. Um, as you all know, Hershey Park uh, is a park located in Hershey, Pennsylvania. Uh, one of the best parks I've been to. I know Caleb hasn't been there yet, but I mean, you got to go, especially when they have this thing that they are going to be uh, doing very soon. Coming this year, um, Hershey Park will be doing the, the, uh, something that they have never done, at least for my know. Uh, they are starting Halloween Haunt, which this will be their first haunt. Uh, I don't know all the details about it, but pretty much they're starting a haunt, which I think is going to be great. I know some parks like have, like especially like California's Green America, what is it, Valley Fair? Um, they have gotten rid of their haunts, which was really disappointed, but I feel like this really makes up for that with uh, Hershey Park doing a haunt. I feel like they could really do some great stuff with it, <laughs> like, like candy-themed haunted houses. Like That would be really cool. And the smells you might get from inside those haunted houses might be fantastic. I mean, just imagine smelling chocolate through an entire haunted house for five minutes, you know, or smelling cotton candy or something like that. I feel like that could really be a part of the immersion of the haunted house. Yeah, like like Jolly Rancher, a uh, Jolly Rancher something, <laughs> like a Jolly Rancher themed house. <laughs> that would be like that would be cool. Hershey Parks got yeah. a surprise for us. Uh, I don't really know what they're gonna do, but I hope it's good, and it'll last for years I'm, to come. I mean, hopefully, it's at least as good as like Bush, like. For me, like, nothing beats Howling Horror Nights, but something along the lines of, like, as good as Bush or something, or Bush or, like, SeaWorld, I feel like that would be really great, especially for a starting year. But uh, that's it for the Hershey Park news. Um, moving on, uh, 
to SeaWorld, uh, SeaWorld Orlando, they uh, recently just put on, like, retract some of Journey to Atlantis, and that thing just opened. Uh, they retract, what is it, the drop of Journey to Atlantis, and it just opened recently. So, I mean, as, 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 it's not that too big of news, but still, I mean, Journey to Atlantis it might have needed that retract, and it got it. So. Now, let's put on the debate, is it a new coaster credit since... Half the roller coaster section, or maybe the whole roller coaster section, was no. Cracked. Yeah, I agree. It's <laughs> not a new credit. <laughs> no way. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, if most of the, if like the whole rides retract, I get it. But for like <laughs> one like little drop section, ah, eh, the roller coaster section and the drop were both retract. Okay. Yeah. Well, oh. Yeah. I mean, still, that's basically like not even much of the ride. So. I don't think it'll count as a new credit, but uh, second to last for our news, um, Kumba. Uh, yeah, as you all know, um, there have been rumors speculating Kumba. Caleb, do you want to take this one? Yeah, so uh, Kumba, according to Screenscape, they are very convinced that Kumba will be closing in the near future, but Bush Gardens, in recent news, has also confirmed that Kumba is going nowhere. So I'm actually really excited that kumba is not going anywhere i personally really love kumba uh hulk is just a little bit better in my opinion but kumba still is a fantastic ride at bgt definitely complements their lineup um it definitely to me is a under popular attraction i should say it never really has that big of a line maybe that's because of its location in the park but it definitely is a underrated attraction in my opinion but uh, these closing rumors came from Screamscape, which I didn't believe it for a second until the park confirms what is happening to Kumba. I don't believe anything for a second. That's why you never really believe something online that you just see on the internet. Yeah, especially with Screamscape, because like their rumors and stuff, they all haven't necessarily been accurate. So uh, it's great to see that... Um, this thing will be staying. I, I obviously love Kumba, so does Caleb. So uh, it's great to see this thing uh, stay, um, even though it doesn't get the most crowds. But it was just great that Bush is really going to keep this because this thing is really a gem, especially for even being in the back of the park, which being in the back of the park does have a disadvantage of it not really getting any crowds. But hey, um, glad that they're keeping it. But uh, moving on to our very last bit of news. Um, a jungle expedition in Tumbili. Uh, that is the new area that opened up at King's Dominion. Um, jungle expedition includes Tumbili, of course, the brand new SNS40 free sim spin. But they also uh, rethemed some of the rides, such as Avalanche, which what is it? It's not like Reptilian or something. Yeah, and I think, I think they have another flat ride. The Scrambler. Yeah, but the Scrambler. Yeah, what is that theme to? Or was that name? Uh, I think it's Arachnidia. <laughs> yeah, Cedar Fair coming in with the, the difficult <laughs> to pronounce names. But uh, yeah, it, I, I, I'm i really proud of Cedar Fair. Uh, I'm, so I'm really proud of them. Uh, this area looks to be absolutely fantastic, especially with that um, uh, maybe the possible volcano replacement coming in. Definitely not soon, but maybe after a couple of years that they'll finally get that replacement in. But uh, yeah, this part of the park looks to be great. Uh, as you all know, they just opened it uh, and riders have... Uh, I mean, their opening day was, what was it? I mean, it, it, they just opened the park, which with this new area and the construction was really fast. So it's really great that they um got to open this thing, especially with how good like Tomb Billy looks personally to be one of my favorite looks to be one of the best free spins, in my opinion. Yeah, it does. According to reviews, unfortunately, I haven't had the pleasure to ride a free spin yet. However, uh, Tomb Billy definitely looks like one of the better ones. Um and from the look of it, it's not really... The area around it is not really done yet. Um, like, it doesn't look done. It doesn't look complete yet. But it does look really fantastic. Yeah, but especially, like, when they do complete it and they get, like... And once it's been there for a couple of years and everything's, like, the way it's supposed to be, like... This could be one of the best amusement park areas out there, especially, of course, with the volcano replacement that could possibly, like, come in a couple years, which, you know, Cedar Fair, uh, they're going to take their time on this. Uh, they need to save up money, especially for it being King's Dominion. But uh, in a couple years, like, a volcano replacement, Tomb Billy, Avalanche, or whatever that thing's called, 
and theming this area could be really something special yeah it could be yes but moving on uh that's it for the news uh not as much news even though it's been like how long since we recorded the last podcast but um three weeks that's it for the news (laughs) three weeks yeah uh but Hey, we're going to move on to the next segment, and as always, our next segment is Ride Rankings, and for today, uh, me and Caleb will be ranking, or Caleb and I will be ranking uh, the top 10 wooden coasters that both of us have ridden. Now, obviously, um, as you may know, <laughs> I kind of have more credits than Caleb, so our- um, A lot more, so you definitely can defi- are- you'll definitely see the quality difference between the two of us. Yes, there will be definitely be a big quality difference. This, uh, but yeah, this is our top ten wooden coasters. I mean, like especially with like both of our number tens, the quality difference is insane. So for me, starting out on my number ten is Goliath, located at Six Flags Great America. Um, this is one of the first RMCs ever made. It opened in twenty fourteen. Uh, this is an RMC Woody. Um. It was the tallest wooden coaster, and I think, and fastest when I opened. And boy, this thing is fantastic. Really packs a punch. Uh, it's not the longest ride, but um, especially at night rides, this thing is absolutely fantastic. So much good things about it. The inversions are very solid. has some great airtime moments. And really, this thing is absolutely fantastic. But Caleb, what's your number 10? I'm almost embarrassed to say this, but my number 10 is Coaster Source at Legoland. Um <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you you can see what we were talking about here. I haven't ridden many wooden roller coasters, so I mean, give me a break here. Um, but that might change soon as I go on trips around places that is not Florida. Um, but yeah, so Coaster Source, it's really smooth. Uh, it's a kitty wooden roller coasters, so I mean, eh, there's nothing really to say about it. I mean, if you go on a good day, I might have some airtime in it. I don't no but uh eh. yeah there's not really much i can say on this moving on yes but moving on my number nine uh this is outlaw run the first ever wooden coaster made by rmc uh don't don't worry there's only two rmc's on this list but um yeah outlaw run as another great rmc uh this is the first ever wooden rmc and this ride is absolutely fantastic. The way it's located in the back of the park, it weaves through everywhere, all the trees, the terrain. It has some absolutely fantastic airtime moments. Like that drop in the back, it's like perfection. It has a great wave turn, and especially the inversions on this thing are absolutely fantastic. Uh, Out all run. Uh, it may not be the smoothest ride, uh, especially for it's, it's probably just maybe the roughest RMC, but. You know, it may not be the smoothest ride, but I feel like throughout that layout, it really does make up for it through everything that has this ride has to offer. But Caleb, what's your number nine? My number nine, again, I'm almost embarrassed to say this, but it's Hurler at Carowinds. Um, this ride is really quality rough. difference. Yep, big quality difference. Um, because Outlaw Run is totally better than a uh, Hurler. But um, anyway, this roller coaster is really rough, but. It does have one solid pop of airtime, at least when we rode it on opening day in May. It did have a solid pop of airtime, solid laterals too. I mean, it, it is rough, so that kind of takes away from the experience. But I mean, if you go on a day where it's running really smooth and really good, then uh, you might actually enjoy it a lot more. I mean, yeah. Um, obviously, now there's only one like Carl remaining. The other one used to be at King's Dominion, which is now Twisted Timbers, but... I feel it could be really great if they RMC'd this thing. I mean, yeah, uh, it could be very similar to Twisted Timbers, but I feel like if they differentiated the uh, layout a little bit, uh, they could get a good RMC out of this, even without it being um, the clone of Twisted Timbers. But um, moving on to our number eight, my number eight is Ravine Fire 2, located at Waldemir. Um, Yeah, Ravine Fire 2. Uh, this thing really works with the terrain that it has. Uh, it has so many good uh, moments to it. Three back-to-back airtime moments. It goes over the road, which is just absolutely great for a wooden coaster. And this ride is really unique when you really come to think about it. Uh, it has so many great moments to it, airtime moments. It really like flies off the terrain. It really utilizes the terrain to its advantage. And this ride is just so fast-paced. Uh, until you get to the top parts of it, but it really is pack a punch and is a fantastic Woody. But Caleb, what's your number eight? My number eight is the racer at Kings Island. I haven't ridden the version at Kings Dominion yet, 
but the one at Kings Island recently went under underwent a retract from the gravity group part of it did and the part that went the re- underwent the retract is really smooth it really delivers some good airtime pumps the other part of it that was not retract is really really rough um you could definitely notice the difference between the retract and the non retract and that it definitely is not the same track uh, because the gravity group track really runs like a dream it is just so smooth and then once you hit the original track it just is it bangs you up and you're just wishing for the ride to end by that point but um so yeah that's really the reason it falls under number eight is because of that section that was not retract i wish in the future that it will become retract uh I hope in the future it does, and that Kings Island will invest more into that. And, uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, I mean, Racer is a good, it's a very, definitely a very good old school racing Woody, but uh, moving on to both of our number sevens. My number seven is another wooden coaster that works absolutely fantastic with the terrain. That is Boulder Dash, located at Lake Compounds in Bristol, Connecticut. Now, Boulder Dash is, it's, has been ranked as like the best wooden coaster in the world now i wouldn't really call it that but still it's up at the golden ticket awards i wouldn't really call it that but still this thing is absolutely insane especially at night it delivers some fantastic night rides and this thing the way it just speeds along the side of the road or not the, the at the end it does by the road but how it just speeds along the side of the mountain and just at the end goes along through those multiple back to back to back airtime moments um this ride is just absolutely fantastic but caleb what's your number seven my number seven is blue streak at cedar point now this ride in my opinion is uh fairly rated i mean some people think it's underrated some people think it's overrated but i think it's fairly rated and that the praise it gets is definitely you know what it's deserving of it has some solid pops of airtime and lateral moments but it's just a little bit rough in my opinion but Roughness aside, it is a really good layout. It has some serious pops of ejector or floater, depending on what date you go and how fast it's running, um, or flow ejector. Um, uh, but yeah, nothing that I have to say about it that hasn't been said already. So, uh, what's your number six, Andrew? All right, my number six is the first GCI of my list. Uh, there's only two GCIs on this list, but. Um, my number six is a Gold Striker, located at California's Great America. Um, though this ride may be just a little bit rough, it really warms up throughout the day, and it could be absolutely hauling towards the end of the day, and it is absolutely fantastic. Uh, <laughs> Gold Striker uh, really is one of the best Western theme coasters out there, and it is just so fantastic. So many uh, good intense moments, some great pops of airtime, and really, I just love this coaster more and more every single time I get out to California to ride it. But what's your number six, Caleb? My number six with the big quality jump is White Lightning at Fun Spot. Now, with the recent retrack, it went, it has been, it ran so smooth. The one time that we did it, uh, that GCI Titan track is definitely noticeable as well that's on it. I just wish there was more of it. Don't you as well, Andrew, wish there was more Titan track on White Lightning? I mean, of course. I mean, who doesn't want Titan Track? Come on. Oh, yeah. You can definitely notice the difference between and how smooth the transition is. I expected it to, you know, maybe a little bit more jarring, but it's it glides in there so smoothly. And it just underwent a retract, so the ride is running like a dream. So much ejector. It's nonstop from beginning to end, just like GCIs normally are. And, um... Yeah, it's a fantastic wooden roller coaster. Yes, it it really is a very it's a solid woody. I wouldn't say it's that good in my opinion, but it's solid. But the final GCI of my list is at number five. That is Mystic Timbers. Uh, this absolutely insane woody. I oh the night rides on this thing and the way it runs at Christmas is absolutely dreamlike. Uh, my favorite ride at King's Island, so much, there's so much about it that is just absolutely so nice. The airtime, of course, is just so fun. It really is a long ride, especially if we're going all the way back and all the way out there and back. And the theming is great. And just one thing, 
don't go in the the shed. shed. Caleb, what's your number five? My number five is the beast at King's Island. So I think that this ride is really rough uh, for starters. Both of my rides that I had, I had one ride right in the morning and I had one ride later in the afternoon. Uh, I couldn't get night rides because it was the park closed really early whenever I went. However, this ride is just so stinking long. It never stops. And the roughness and the jankiness of it just add on to that how long it is. I didn't realize how long this coaster was until I got on it. And let me tell you, <laughs> it's basically as long as people say it is. It is like, feels like you are, how should I say this? It feels like you are on a torture trip, but a fun torture trip. You know what I'm saying? Um, I yeah. feel like if I, if I feel like if I wrote it too many times, I would have a migraine after it. It's, it's that rough. But, I mean, it still is a fantastic ride to give every once in a while. Um, Yeah, but both rides were fantastic on it, in my opinion. And, uh, yeah, moving on. What's your number four, Andrew? All right, my number four is probably one of the most, like, underrated coasters. Just maybe the most underrated coaster I have ever ridden. That is the best boardwalk coaster out there, Boardwalk Bullet, located at Kema Boardwalk in Kima, Texas. Kema, Kema, what is it? Kema, Kima, uh, whatever. Uh, but yeah, this thing is so, so flipping good. The way it just um, goes in and out through each other, it is just insane. It really just weaves throughout each, throughout itself, and it is just so compact. The thing makes this things so good and the compactness of this thing really puts this ride to a big advantage and it's just put, filled with so much good airtime moments uh some intense moments and it is really just so good but caleb what's your number four my number four is thunderhead at dollywood so this roller coaster is just again really aggressive that's what you would see on my list is that as i go further and further up You'll see that I really love aggressive, non-stop, action-packed wooden roller coasters. That's my type of roller coaster. Uh, but Thunderhead is exactly what GCI loves to do with the twisted drops, rapid-fire airtime moments, um, and laterals, and um, and the night rides on this thing as well are also just breathtaking i mean i went on this one time at night and i had a hard time comprehending what just happened it is so much different during the day than it is at night um nothing that hasn't been said again about this roller coaster that i can say other than that uh so moving on andrew to our top three Yes, our top three. This is where we get into the really good woodies. Uh, my number three, this is the legend. And man, this coaster is a legend of a ride. It is so good. Legend located at Holiday World in Santa Claus, Indiana. Uh, it, this thing just really shines at Hollywood nights. Nice. That's probably why I have it so high, and especially with the night rides. But this thing, I, you just, it's just, this is probably my definition of a perfect woody even though it's not my number one woody it is just so good it has some of the best laterals maybe just the best laterals you will ever experience on a ride the airtime is absolutely fantastic and this ride is non-stop from start to finish there is never a part of the ride where you're just sitting along it is just flies through that layout and at night it just makes this thing even better but staying in the top three what's your number three caleb my number three is Mind Blower at Fun Spot. So I know I might get a little bit of flack for this, uh, but in my opinion, Mind Blower is elite. I mean, seriously, this ride, again, is nonstop from start to finish, weaving in and out of its structure, even though it's a little bit rough on the rough side. Uh, and by a little bit, I mean a lot of it. Um, I would say that Definitely, this is the most underrated roller coaster that I, that I've ridden as far as wooden roller coasters go. Um, but whenever we first rode it, what was it? The morning rides, Andrew, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, it's... It, 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 yeah. We rode it in the morning when it was running really smooth, according to him. So um, I may have yeah. not gotten... Uh, the just ride on a, ride on a rough day, bro. 
Yeah, I know exactly. But we went on a good day where it was running super smooth according to its regular pace. And um, I just think that this ride deserves so much more praise than it gets. Uh, yeah, I disagree, but so it's your opinion. But um, moving on to my number two, this is Ghost Rider, located at Knott's Berry Farm. Ghost Rider, uh, once again, with the legend, uh, same with the legend. Um, this ride has so much things that is just absolutely fantastic, as always, with these great woodies, the laterals, the airtime, the intensity. This ride has it all, and especially if you make it, to, make it out to California and ride this, uh, the experience with just being in California is so nice and especially riding ghost rider this thing is absolutely fantastic it actually used to be a cci which gci really came in here and made it one of the best wooden coasters in the world and once any of y'all who's listening gets to ride this thing i bet you'll agree it is world class and one of the best woodies out there but caleb what's your number two my number two is mystic timbers at king's island now again the aggressive, fast-paced wooden roller coasters. I mean, seriously, this is the king of aggressive roller coasters, I'm telling you. It is just unbelievable how aggressive and how rapid-fire this thing is. It's just one after the other until the finish. And let me just say, the shed is underwhelming <laughs> that's all we have to say about this shed it's underwhelming but i mean hey they tried and uh yeah that's all i can say about the shed and yeah uh, yeah just don't go in expecting their shed to be this big old themed thing at the end of the ride uh i mean yeah yeah i mean i bet a lot of you know like I bet a lot of you already know what the shed is. I mean, I feel like it's, 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 I mean, it just didn't need the hype. I feel like it's good for being a break run. It's just, it didn't really need the hype, especially when they uh, decided to open this thing. But moving on, my number one, this is the voyage located at Holiday Worlds. <laughs> Something that y'all probably like, wait, what? Why is he not putting this in? Yeah, El Toro did not make this list. <laughs> yeah, I like rides like Goliath and Outlaw Run better, but. Okay, what do you think of El Toro not making this list? You're an El Toro hater, aren't you? <laughs> I like it. Yeah, I'm a hater. <laughs> He's an El Toro hater. Yeah. He just he just is there's always one roller coaster that enthusiasts are against in their lineup. And El Toro is his. I mean, I like it. It's just I don't know that much about it, but moving on. <laughs> uh Voyage, yeah. Uh, Voyage, I mean, what else is there to say about this thing? Hollywood Nights, Hollywood Nights, Voyage, Trimless Night Rides. That is, that is everything you could possibly want. But yeah, um, oh my gosh, like Voyage is so fantastic. Really, it's just is the perfect Woody. So much better than El Toro. And I just am so excited to finally, or not finally, just was so excited to get back onto this thing. And everything about it, trimless, the experience with it being at Hollywood Nights, and everything about it, the airtime, the laterals, it is nonstop. The lo- such a long ride, and everything about it is just so perfect. But Caleb, what's your number one? My number one uh, is the old lightning rod, the one before the steel retrack. Uh, so... I know some of you might say, why is Lightning Rod on my list and not Andrew's? But that's because I'll include I'll include it on my list just because I respect it. <laughs> I respect Lightning Rod enough to do it. But um, yeah, so the old Lightning Rod, even though it was kind of rough, I personally didn't mind the roughness of Lightning Rod. Um, I could ride it over and over and over and over again without stopping and Andrew will tell you, even before the retrack, we just rode that thing up so so good. Um, but yeah, this ride is, again, aggressive. But the airtime on this ride is definitely more prevalent and more uh, it's more sustained ejector. And that's one thing I like about this and other RMCs as well, is that they provide so much e- sustained ejector. And I love that. Uh, so... Yeah, that is. Yeah, that's our. That's the end of our I mean, list. Yeah, uh, Lightning Rod as a Woody was absolutely fantastic, especially in 2016. That thing was running like a dream. But 
But yeah, I mean, Lightning Rod, I just love Lightning Rod Lemming. Like, we wrote it back in August, wasn't it? Right? Yeah, August. Yeah. Was it? Yeah, was we got so, so many rides. That was before the retract, yeah. wasn't it? No, no, that was after. Uh, they, yeah. But, but I still I mean, wrote it. I like I it better when... Before. Yeah. But uh, I, I personally like like the lightning rod better as a woody i mean yeah i've ridden it so many times as a steel steel a uh, hybrid coaster not steel but uh, yeah I, I just feel like it was especially from my 2016 rides lightning rod was absolutely elite it was so good running so fast like there's no trims in the top hat and it's great news like i've heard from people that have ridden it like it is i've heard that it's running better this year than it was last year which at least it's running faster like don't you i mean don't you agree caleb yeah, I think it is uh, running a little bit faster than it was from off-ride POVs, and, or not POVs, but off-ride footage from what I've seen. So I'm really excited to ride it in the future when I do get to Dollywood to do it again. I mean, yeah. I mean, hopefully we'll get to go back to Dollywood soon, but we'll just have to wait and see. But let's move on to our next segment. Uh, we have Ride Opinion, and for today's Ride Opinion... Yes, we have one of at least my favorites. I know, of course, it's one of your favorites, Caleb. This is the one, the only Mako located at SeaWorld Orlando. Mako, oh, I, I just love this ride to bits. I've ridden it so many times. Like, Caleb, how many times have you ridden it? I've ridden it 65 times. I know yeah, that's not I mean, impressive that's, according that's... to some enthusiast standards, but it still is pretty impressive. Yeah, I, I haven't, like, kept... I haven't kept, I'm looking at it right now. I haven't kept, like, kept track of it throughout my whole life because I just haven't, like, I read before I was an enthusiast. But, like, already, like, this year in 2022, I've ridden it, like, 37 times, which, yeah, for three months, I feel like that's a lot. I don't think I've ridden it at all this year so far. Only ride at SeaWorld I've, <laughs> yeah, we only can... ride at SeaWorld I've ridden so far is, is uh, Icebreaker. Yeah, we gotta get you to ride Mako. <laughs> but yeah, uh, Mako. Um, as we all know, uh, with this ride opinion, uh, we give our rankings of it and our overall score. So for let's start off with, with the score. For me, I'm giving this thing a ten out of ten. I mean, come on, it's ten out of ten. It's not obviously not the best coaster in the world, but for what it is, easy ten out of ten. And for my rank, for me, it is ranked nineteen, which. For me, like riding like 600 coasters, some like a coaster being it at my home park, being in my top 20, even like that is a feat alone. But I feel like so much about this ride is absolutely fantastic. And for me, it just takes my number 19 spot. What about you, Caleb? So for me, it is my number 12 on my list, and it is definitely a 10 out of 10 for me as well. I mean, this coaster is just the perfect BM hyper. I mean, I have no complaints about it floater or flowjector on it on the speed hill and even if the trims are on and they're trimming hard it still is a fantastic ride especially during hollow scream that ride feels like it's going out of control doesn't it andrew yeah it's it's absolutely fantastic i mean when you think about it i i like this ride way more than you like think about it for a second like <laughs> Like, I like it way more than you because, like, I've ridden 600 coasters. Caleb, you've ridden around 100, and you rank at number 12. I rank it at number 19. I've ridden, what, 114 different coasters? So, yeah, out of the percentage of that. Yeah, so for, like, how... Yeah, for, like, the percentage of it is, like... Yeah, I like it way more than you. <laughs> but... Yes, uh, we're taking a water break. <laughs> if you if you're just wondering what the awkward silence was, but um, yes. So that is our opinion on Mako. Uh, everything about Mako, I just love Mako. It is so just. It's one of my fan favorites. Don't you agree? Oh yeah, it's one of my fan favorites too. It's my favorite at the park, despite Icebreaker being uh, Andrew's favorite, which I'm mad about. But you know. Whatever, he'll like a family coaster over a B&M Hyper. That's just fine. I mean, <laughs> I'm fine with that. I mean, know, yeah. It's an opinion. Whatever. 
Wait, 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 wait. What are you saying? <laughs> Don't you like icebreaker better than makeup? No. <laughs> oh, okay then. Wait, so wait, so if so you're saying oh, you like icebreaker if I had better makeup, than Manta. Yes. <laughs> that's more like it. So you're saying like if, <laughs> if I had makeup my number 19, you think I like icebreaker more? Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, who knows? Some some people's opinions can be whack, you know? But yeah, some like Caleb, do. you have some whack opinions. I do. Have you have some like whack the wackiest opinions. opinion. I do have the wackiest opinion. <laughs> I do. I do. I do. Yes, I do. <laughs> yes. And yes. my That's... wacky opinion for the next segment on our podcast, the unpopular opinion segment. Mine is that what a transition. My favorite <laughs> element on a roller coaster, like my absolute favorite element that you could throw on a roller coaster, is a hydraulic launch. And I am serious about this. This is why I was top throw dragster fanboy for so long. And well, because Iron Guazi system is no longer my number one, but it still is my number two overall. So, I mean, I just adore that ride. But unfortunately, it's the only hydraulic launch roller coasters that i've been on so i need to get on more but um yeah, yeah but i definitely think it's a dying I, mean, I feel like degree. that yeah i feel like your opinion of that would strengthen like if you were a king to call an accelerator especially accelerator because like accelerator you just get launched out of that station it is one of the best launches i've ever experienced and i feel like you would really like that yeah, I feel like I would really like the uh, acceleration there. It's uh, isn't it a lot faster than Top Thrill Dragsters? Um, from the acceleration, like I, obviously it's not faster, but like the acceleration, like the pure stun, like stun of it, I feel like it kind of like feels faster. Like you were just like launched immediately out of the station. It is one of the best launches you'll ever experience. But for my popular opinion, um. This is the Twisted Timbers. As you all know, Twisted Timbers is an RMC located at King's Dominion in Doswell, Virginia. But yes, Twisted Timbers is my third favorite RMC just behind Iron Quasi and Steel Vengeance. Yes, you heard that right. I like it better than Lightning Rod. Oh, which is just very odd. So I can't really vote. I haven't done it yet, so I can't voice yeah. my opinion on it, but, you know, I respect it. Andrew. I mean, I feel like it's, I feel like it's even weird for me to say, like, it's weird for me to say that I like it better than Lightning Rod, which I love Lightning Rod. They're so close. Uh, both Lightning Rod and Twisted Timbers make my, like, top 10, so both absolutely fantastic rides, but moving on to the next segment, this is actually the last segment, but. We still have, you'll probably, I guess you're listening, you'll probably see there's so much more time left, but this is the bracket that we have been teasing through the whole episode. This is a ride bracket. We are starting a ride bracket for this podcast, and we are so excited to see what the results are. Um, but this bracket will be the U.S. Intamin Coasters, which there are 32 and we will be going through all of them and doing a bracket. And pretty much how this will work, um, we're going to uh, compare two coasters. Take, for instance, let's say we're comparing Storm Runner and Accelerator. Uh, Caleb will give his vote. I will give my vote. And depending on if it is 2 nothing or a tie, uh, if it's 2 nothing, obviously that will finalize and will be moved on to the next round. Uh, but... If it is a tie between me and Caleb, we will be putting this on the Coaster Thrills Instagram or and the Backyard Thrills Instagram. We'll have to see, uh, but we'll be doing that poll, and people, you guys, the viewers, will be voting. So make sure, right as you are listening to this and right as the episode goes out, uh, go on to both of our Instagrams and look at our story and vote, because you could be one of the people that decides this bracket. But... Let's start out with our first matchup. Caleb, do you want to do this? Yeah, so our first matchup for the brackets are Alpine Bobsled and La Vivora. So personally, yes. <laughs> I think I think personally La Vivora looks better. I haven't ridden either of them, so I can't really 
have a strong opinion, and that'll be a trend throughout this whole thing, that I haven't written a lot of these, but uh, I will give my best opinion on it. So, yeah, that's my vote. I mean, yeah. Uh, I've only done one of them, too. Like, Alpine Bobsa, which I'm really disappointed about, was closed when I went uh, this past year. So, since I haven't done it, I don't know. I, I've heard really good things about Alpine Bobsa, but still, like, La Vibora is one of the one of my favorites i've ever done so not favorites i've ever done but it's just so fun like it's a great velvet coaster and i really have some great memories with it so lavi bora will be the first ever coaster for this podcast moving on to the next round but our next matchup is half pipe located at uh, what is it electric gardens versus escape from gringotts um my opinion this is so easy i'm taking gringotts you I'm taking Gringotts too. Gringotts is just so immersive in its theming. It is such a good immersive experience. Not much of a roller coaster experience, but it is just the whole theming as a whole and the ride, how it just goes through with that theming, just all in one, just creates an awesome roller coaster. Yeah, I, 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 t- I totally agree with you. But next question up. Oh, uh, this is the two Intamin Stratocoasters. Yes, that is King Daka, located at Six Flags Great Adventure versus Top of the Dragster. For me, it's super easy. I'm going Top of the Dragster. I feel like that's the thing with everybody. You, Caleb? I'm going Dragster. I haven't ridden Ka yet, but just from what people have said, I'm going Dragster. Yeah, I mean, everything, obviously, you all know Dragster. Okay, I see your point. I feel- I feel like it's just, I've the experience with that thing is so much better. Of course, you have the bleachers, like, just getting to watch. And it's just, being at Cedar Point, I feel like it's just so much better than King Daka. I mean, even though I definitely have respect for King Daka, King Daka is such a great ride, even though KLB haven't done it. But in our next matchup, matchup, what am I saying? But our next matchup, I feel like this one is definitely more tougher than the others. This is a Cheetah Hunt versus Incredicoaster. Now, Oh, I love both of these rides. It's really tough for me, but I'm, I'm going to decide this. Caleb, what's yours? Mine, actually, I've been on both of these for once, and I think Cheetah Hunt is better. Yeah, I think we'll have to agree there. Cheetah Hunt is one of the best family coasters out there. I mean, still, I absolutely love and credit coaster, but like Cheetah Hunt is just so good. But now we have two... More of a defunct, not like de- currently defunct, but uh, the both this model is starting to get less popular. But this is um, the Intamin uh, Inverted Coasters. These this first matchup is Possessed versus Steel Venom, Possessed at Dorney Park and Steel Venom at Valley Fair. And for me, uh, I bet Caleb you could agree with this, even though you haven't done both of them. But uh, for me, easily. Steel Venom, just because of this one moment on it, and that is the holding break. I easily think Steel Venom is better. Yep, I would agree. That holding break is definitely, you know, an element of surprise, probably for most people. Yes, definitely agree. Uh, but we're 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 chugging through this, man. Um, we're doing great so far, and I'm real excited to like continue this bracket. But in our next matchup, we have two of the intimate half pipe coasters, even though we already did one from a lich. Uh, but this is Avatar Airbender. I think that's uh, yeah, Avatar. Our, ugh, I cannot speak in today's episode, but Avatar Airbender located at uh, Nickelodeon Universe. Both these are actually located at Nickelodeon Universe. This one is at Mall of America. Versus the other one, Timmy's Half Pike. Half, yeah. Well, no, I, half cannot, pipe, I, pipe. I cannot speak. Yes. Thank you, Caleb. But it, yes, Half Pipe. Half, yes, I got through. Uh, that being located at the one in American Dream. But um, I love both these. But for me, I'll probably take Avatar Airbender. You, Caleb? Uh, I don't know on this one. I mean, they both are. They both look the same to me. Um, I haven't ridden either of them again. But just for the sake of the vote, I'll say what Andrew. I'll trust Andrew's word on this and say, and say Avatar. Uh, yeah, they're about the exact same. Uh, I mean, it's, it's you got to pick one though, and Avatar Airbender will be moving on to the next round. Now, here's a controversial one. Eh, I won't put it as controversial. But, uh we have American Eagle versus El Toro. Uh, Caleb, you take this one. <laughs> El Toro, no question. American Eagle? 
<laughs> you El Toro hater, you know you like El Toro better. No, no. I, I, yeah, I'm not that. I'm not that bad. <laughs> yeah, El Toro. I mean, come on. Uh, Why would you not? <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah, El Toro. I still love El Toro. Come on, I'm not gonna do that to y'all. But we have a really good matchup. I mean, kind of the like the really good matchups probably shouldn't be in the first round, but. Here we are, Sky Rush versus Maverick. Um, love both these rides. I'd probably take Maverick. Uh, two very good instrument coasters, but for me, I feel like Maverick is just a little bit better. Sky Rush is just a little too short, but you haven't done Sky Rush, so uh, what do you think, Caleb, even though like what looks better? Honestly, I hate to do this because we haven't had a tie yet, but I'm going to say Maverick as well. <laughs> Maverick is just so aggressive. Like I said with the wooden roller coaster, uh, top tens that I really love an aggressive roller coaster, and this is definitely one of them. Yes. Uh, I mean, both these are just such fantastic rides. Easily, both of them are top 25, depending on how many coasters you've ridden. But um, now we have the next two Superman Ride of Steel clones, the one at Darien Lake versus the one at Six Flags America. Now, for me, since like the Ride of Steel one at Darien Lake was the original, I'm going with that one. I mean, come on. Yeah, I'm going to say the same. The one at Darien Lake definitely has a better setting. Yeah, and, and, and it's just, in my opinion, it's just it's just really much better. I mean, I've had way better experiences on that thing. And here we have another really good matchup. I mean, this is Velocicoaster versus Intimidator 305. I feel so bad, like, not having, like, like if one of these gets out, I feel so bad, like, not having it move to the next round. But yeah, they're both uh, so I feel like elite. this matchup, yes, they really are both so elite. But I feel like this matchup really depends on how like what's your type of ride i personally like veloc coaster better but really like let's you could like intimidator three of five five better it's just your preference but caleb what's your opinion veloc coaster the only one i've been yes, on I, i've been on veloc coaster not i305 yet so yeah that might be I biased mean, yeah I mean, yeah, I feel like if you really like Intimidator 305, it could really easily beat um, Floss Coaster, but I feel like it's, it's just Floss Coaster is just too good to not move on. So, uh, moving on to the next match. Like, as I said earlier, we are chugging along. Like, don't, like, we are chugging along through this. Uh, Skull Mountain, located at Six Flags Over Texas versus Wave Breaker. Um, I might think on this one. What's yours, Caleb? Um, uh, well, saying that I haven't really seen the inside of Skull Mountain, and I have seen inside of Wavebreaker, I'm going to say Wavebreaker just because of the launch. Hmm. Yeah, I have to disagree. Yeah, I'm going with Skull Mountain. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know, but I'm going with Skull Mountain. Uh... Nothing against Wavebreaker. Wavebreaker is great, but Skull Mountain is just super fun. I think I I love Skull Mountain. Uh, it has some really good whippy moments, especially in the back, and it's really just a fun ride. You like going into it not knowing anything will really give you a benefit. So, Caleb, do you want to take the next one? So our next one is the two Intamin hydraulic launch coasters that are not Stratas, and that's Storm Runner and Accelerator. Uh, personally, I think I would go with Storm Runner just because it has more of a layout than Accelerator does. But nothing ditching Accelerator. That launch looks insane, but Storm Runner just looks like to have more of a complete package than Accelerator does. Yeah, I kind of have to agree there. Accelerator still is absolutely fantastic, though. I mean, that launch really makes the ride so good, but... Uh, yes, uh, we, this is like the fourth to last. Like, we, as I said, we are just chugging along. Um, uh, moving on to the next one. This is Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motor Bike Adventure located at Islands of Adventure in or at Universal Orlando Resort located in Orlando, Florida in the United... <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> but, uh, yes, we have that. Versus is Fahrenheit located at Hershey Park. And I think you we know, can... I'm think about this again. What? I think we can unanimously together that Hagrid's is better? Hmm. 
I disagree. I'm going Fahrenheit. Really? <laughs> yeah. Hey, we got another tie. Uh, okay. More for the. We gotta give something. Yeah, we, we gotta do. get something for the viewers. We gotta get more for the viewers, but yeah, I think yes. the viewers even though like I Hagrid's. Oof, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, I I love Fahrenheit so much, so who knows? We'll have to see what the viewers do. I, it's definitely gonna move on, but uh, yes, Fahrenheit, in my opinion, is better. It's just a really good ride. Fahrenheit is so underrated, in my opinion. But moving on to the next one, we have another Superman ride, though this one is so much different. Superman the Ride, located at Six Flags New England versus Millennium Force. Now, this one is just really tough for me. Um, you know, I. It's really tough for me. I think I'm going to go with uh, Superman the Ride. Uh, what, what about you, Caleb? I'm going to go with the one that I have ridden on, and that is Millie. Oof. I feel like this would be a good one for the viewers to vote on. Uh, we'll have yeah, to wait and see, but... Typer. Yes, two of uh, the two original steel coasters fighting for the number one coaster in the world. Uh, both of these rides... So good. Uh, really, I mean, Monty Forest does have its eh, moments, but both these rides are just so good, especially, like, Superman's layout is just insane, even though the restraints do take it down a little bit. But second to last for our matchups, do you want to take this one, Caleb? Yep, so we have Flash Vertical Velocity at Six Flags Discovery Kingdom versus Vertical Velocity at Six Flags Great America. Now, I think just for the quirk of it, I'm actually going to go with Flash Vertical Velocity. Wait, what do you think about it? Both of these are called Flash Vertical, vertical Velocity. Yeah, they're both <laughs> pretty much called the same thing right now. I'm going to go with the Discovery Kingdom one that is funky and weird. Yeah, even though I haven't done it, like I'm going to agree with you, Caleb. I mean, come on, especially with that... The more original layout for an intimate impulse coaster. But for our last matchup of the bracket, the last part of the last segment of this podcast, we have Sandy's Blasting Bronco located at Nickelodeon Universe versus Is a Superman Escape from Krypton. For me, this is so easy. Blasting Bronco all the way. I'm also going to agree with you on this one, Andrew, because I'm a sucker for backward sections on roller coasters, too. I love it whenever a backwards section comes in on a roller coaster, especially a backwards launch. Yeah, and Blasting Bronco packs such a good punch. It is so, so it's just so good. I, I love Blasting Bronco, uh, especially like, in, as you can tell, like that, that's the end of the bracket, by the way. But as you can tell, Intimate is one of the best manufacturers in the world. We should We should do that ranking, like top 10 manufacturers. We should, but we're going to have to save that for another episode. Yes, for another episode, but uh, yeah, but really Intamin is one of the, depending on like what rides you like, uh, Intamin is such a great manufacturer. They were one of just the manufacturers that really started it all. And I mean, really, like there's so many good manufacturers, like it, it could be hard to like think of your top three uh, manufacturers. Like for me, RMC is obviously number one, but yeah, Intamin is really up there and they have... Them. Yes, I mean, yeah, I mean, come on, RMC is RMC, but uh, Intamin really does have just a fantastic portfolio of rides, but, I mean, yeah, like, Intamin is so, yeah, and, and you can really tell with this bracket and how many good coasters they have, uh, but definitely stay tuned for, like, the next episode because we're going to even continue this bracket. I'm so excited to see, like, what will, like what coaster will win it. Don't you agree? Yeah, I do, and we did leave some out, such as, like, run at cedar point the first into pain coaster because we obviously knew it wasn't gonna win this i mean yeah and also it makes the bracket like more even you know it does yes but um i mean yeah uh do you think we should end the episode yeah i think that's all the time we have for today stay tuned for next week's episode yeah. where we get down the bracket even more and, yes, and stay tuned. Uh, definitely. And, oh, and stay tuned to the Coaster Unscripted podcast Instagram for these brackets. Yeah, so we got so much stuff more coming. Uh, definitely stay tuned. We 
uh, I mean, this is, I mean, we're already like four episodes into the first season. And think about this, like this podcast could go all the way. We can go the first season, second season, third season. We could have so many seasons to this thing. And I'm really excited to see where this podcast gets to. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, just too. one thing. We just, yeah, just one thing. Like we got to post every Sunday. Uh, we've, been, we've been lacking and we're going to try to be more constant to you guys. But uh, that'll end the episode. Caleb, any last words? Um, I don't have anything. Chicken. <laughs> I know I should have something, Chicken. but I don't got anything at this point. If you have listened up to this point, <laughs> that, thank that... you very much. We appreciate it. And follow the Coasters Unscripted podcast on Instagram. Follow Coaster Thrills on Instagram as well and Backyard Thrills. And uh, do you want to hope you guys Andrew? enjoyed? Yeah, I'll end it. Hope you guys enjoyed and see ya.